For as long as societies have existed, humans have persistently strived to innovate and construct increasingly grand, larger, and superior architectural marvels. However, for all the jaw-dropping structures that were actually built, there are some mega-projects that for better or worse, never made it off the drawing board. Ranging from a colossal pyramid-shaped structure housing the population of an entire city, to a towering skyscraper imagined to be suspended from space itself, here are the most insane mega-projects that were never built. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. In the late 1990s, American engineer Norman Nixon envisioned the creation of the Freedom Ship, an immense vessel unlike any other. To put it into perspective, this colossal ship would have stretched over one mile in length. As if its sheer enormity wasn't impressive enough, the Freedom Ship would have soared to a towering height of 25 stories, with plans even including an airport on its rooftop. The Freedom Ship had the capacity to house up to 100,000 individuals. Furthermore, equipped with schools, offices, a hospital, library, and even a duty-free shopping mall, it was meticulously designed to provide ample amenities for the comfort and entertainment of its thousands of residents. This floating community was designed to travel the world every two or three years, spending the majority of its time docked at ports along its route. Undoubtedly, undertaking such a colossal megaproject comes with an equally massive price tag. By 2002, projected costs for the Freedom Ship had soared to $11 billion. The exorbitant price, coupled with skepticism regarding the feasibility of a city-sized vessel, has ultimately prevented the Freedom Ship from ever setting sail. The Great Pyramids of Giza stand as perhaps the most renowned pyramid-shaped structures globally. But two centuries ago, another monumental pyramid nearly emerged that could have rivaled their fame. By the 1820s, London had become the world's most populous city, leading to predictably cramped conditions. Space was so scarce that even the city's burial grounds felt the strain, with coffins often stacked atop one another and graves reaching depths of some 20 feet. In response to this escalating issue, architect Thomas Wilson proposed an ambitious solution to alleviate London's burial crisis. His vision was the Metropolitan Sepulchre, also known as the London Death Pyramid, an imposing granite pyramid burial structure to be erected on Primrose Hill in North London. This peculiar edifice would have stood a staggering 94 stories tall, stretching nearly 1,000 feet into the London skyline, similar in height to the Shard one of the UK's tallest buildings today. With a capacity to accommodate up to 5 million bodies, the sheer height and opaque material of this colossal structure would likely have cast a shadow over its surroundings, depriving nearby residents of sunlight. However, beyond its aesthetic and practical shortcomings, the London Death Pyramid would have also incurred considerable costs, with construction estimates reaching around 7 million pounds at the time equivalent to approximately $1.2 billion in today's currency. In 1934, about a century after Wilson's pyramid proposition, Popular Science magazine unveiled plans for a megaproject that could have reshaped the very fabric of England's capital city. The concept was an airport. But not just any airport. This one was envisioned to be nestled right next to the iconic Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. Stretching across the width of the River Thames, the airport would extend from Westminster Bridge to Lambeth Bridge, boasting dimensions of approximately 1,000 feet in width and over 2,600 feet in length. According to the project blueprints, the airport would also rise to a height sufficient to accommodate the tallest ship's masts. Supporting this mammoth structure were eight pillars, each equipped with elevators to ferry passengers from ground level to the terminal facilities. It's evident that there were significant issues with the proposal. Foremost among these concerns was the proximity of the airport to iconic landmarks such as Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament, 
presenting a clear risk of costly accidents. Also, conventional airport standards dictate that runways should be at least 6,000 feet long, more than double the length of the proposed runway. This is probably why plans for Westminster City Airport never gained traction. In 1919, amid the fervor of emerging communism, plans were brewing for a strikingly audacious structure that would have left an indelible mark on the Russian skyline. Architect Vladimir Tatlin envisioned a monument to commemorate the dawn of communism in what is now modern-day St. Petersburg. He conceived the Tatlin Tower, a towering structure reaching 1,300 feet in height, intended to serve as both the headquarters and monument of the Comintern, a Soviet-controlled international organization advocating for global communism. The design featured a contracting double helix spiraling upward, supported by a colossal diagonal beam resembling a fusion of the Eiffel Tower and a spiral slide. Nestled within this intricate metal framework were four rotating glass geometric structures, each spinning at varying speeds to add an extra layer of dynamism to the ensemble. The largest and most grounded geometric structure was a cube, completing just one revolution annually. This area was designated for common term meetings. Above it, a smaller pyramid, revolving once per month, would serve as the venue for Comintern executive activities. The third structure, a rotating cylinder completing one revolution weekly, was intended to accommodate Comintern propaganda services. Lastly, crowning the tower was a diminutive sphere housing the Comintern radio station, completing one revolution daily. As impressive as this tower may have appeared in its envisioned form, its actual construction was highly improbable. Given that water encompasses 71% of the Earth's surface, it's no surprise that aquatic megaprojects have captured the imagination of designers. One such visionary architect, Kevin Chopfair, conceived grandiose plans for an imposing structure to be erected off the shores of New Orleans in 2009. To address the city's recurrent flooding issues, instead of opting for conventional approaches like building on higher ground or fortifying flood defenses, Shopfair proposed a more extravagant remedy. The New Orleans Arcology Habitat is a towering megastructure standing at 1,200 feet tall, characterized by a triangular frame and imbued with principles of sustainability. It could accommodate 40,000 residents and boast amenities such as a school, hospital, hotels, and even casinos. The structure was envisioned with horizontal sections equipped with electric train carriers for transportation, complemented by vertical commuting facilitated through a network of elevators. Yet, what truly set the New Orleans Arcology Habitat apart was its concept as a floating city. This innovative design would enable the structure to rise above floodwaters in the event of inundation. As an added measure of resilience, the structure's open triangular frame was engineered to dissipate hurricane winds, allowing gusts to pass through the building. However, Despite the bold design and the structure's ability to withstand extreme weather events, this project never came to life. Going all the way back to 400 BCE, a Greek architect conceived a monumental plan that would have dwarfed any structure of its time. Dinocrates, a technical advisor and associate of Alexander the Great, envisioned building a colossal monument of Alexander the Great into Mount Athos. Unfortunately, Dinocrates did not provide any detailed blueprints for this monument. However, based on historical accounts and artistic depictions, it is believed that this monumental shrine would have extended all the way to the summit of Mount Athos. If that were the case, this monumental tribute would have soared to over 6,500 feet in height. To put this into perspective, India's Statue of Unity, the tallest monument in the world today, stands at less than one-tenth of the potential height of Dinocrates' colossal carving concept. Considering that the construction of the Statue of Unity required over 3,000 workers and 57 months to complete, 
It's unsurprising that Dinocrates' ambitious vision remains just that, an ambitious idea. In 1784, plans were underway for an extravagant monument to honor a revolutionary thinker. Architect Etienne Louis Boulay was determined to pay homage to the late Isaac Newton with a grand cenotaph. But this wasn't to be an ordinary cenotaph. Boulay envisioned a monumental sphere, within which Newton's sarcophagus would be placed at the base. This spherical shrine was of such immense proportions that its towering height of 500 feet would have surpassed the tallest structures of the time, including the Strasbourg Cathedral and the Great Pyramids of Giza. While its exterior appearance was undoubtedly striking, the interior plans for this monument were truly extraordinary. By strategically placing a series of openings throughout the sphere, sunlight would filter through during the day, creating a meticulously accurate portrayal of the stars. At night, the sphere would be illuminated by a massive lamp within an armillary sphere, effectively simulating an artificial sun. Despite the majestic vision of this megaproject, it was never intended to be realized. In fact, Boulay was often referred to as a paper architect, known for crafting utopian fantasy projects that were never intended for actual construction. We saved the best one for last, a megaproject of proportions unlike any other. This is the Analemma Tower, a mind-boggling concept of a skyscraper reaching a staggering height of 20 miles, hanging suspended from an elevation of over 31,000 miles above the Earth's surface. The proposal was to have the skyscraper suspending from an asteroid orbiting the Earth, connected by ultra-strong cables. Powered by solar panels positioned on the skyscraper above the Earth's atmosphere, the tower would harness the sun's energy efficiently. Moreover, a continuous supply of water would be sourced from the clouds surrounding the structure, ensuring sustainability in the sky. However, the feasibility of such a colossal endeavor remains questionable. Presently, there are no materials strong enough to construct cables capable of supporting the tower's weight. The potential consequences of structural failure are chilling to contemplate, with the tower's residents in any city unfortunate enough to be below, facing catastrophic outcomes if the cables were to snap. The biggest challenge out of all is the exorbitant cost of construction. The expenses associated with transporting building materials to the asteroid and constructing the tower is so staggering that it cannot be put down in numbers. Consequently, it's evident that the Analemma Tower would remain nothing more than an exceedingly expensive science fiction fantasy. These are some of the craziest megaprojects that have ever been proposed. Which project do you hope will be realized in the world someday? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.